in here. Now, every first semester of the year, University of Ghana Sports Directorate organizes certain games. And so the 2022-2023 Interhall Games have been integrated into the UG at 75 program. And so that is the launch we are seeing today. We have also included the University of Ghana Basic School. And so we shall be celebrating UG at 75 Basic School intersectional games that will come off from February 28th to March 2nd of uh, this year. So in a few days, the celebration will start. On the 9th of March, we will be having a UG at 75 roundtable discussion on sports. We would want to also make our contribution in the sports industry by organizing this roundtable. We also have the Interhall Cross Country, which is the UG at 75 Interhall Cross Country, on Saturday, March the 11th. It's going to be a loop and it will be at the sports complex opposite the University of Ghana Almuna office and the mosque or the Echo Bank. The Interhall Athletics, which is the UGR 75 Interhall Athletics competition, will take place from March 15th to March 17th. And because we are refurbishing our stadium for or towards the African Games 2023, we shall be having our athletic competition over here uh, at the old athletic over. We have to go back to the roots, but very soon we shall be running on not Tatan, but Mondo at the UG Stadium. On March 23rd, we shall be having UG at 75 sports lecture, which will be delivered in the Great Hall to invite all sports enthusiasts, media, etc., for that lecture, which will deal with the ecosystem of sports in Ghana. On March 30th to April 2nd, University of Ghana is hosting the GUSA Cross Country Competition. And so the UG at 77 GUSA Cross Country Competition will take place from March 30th to April 2nd. In April, May, we have from 24th April to May 10th, we have the University of Ghana 75 Interbasic University Schools Games. So the University of Ghana Basic School will be hosting other basic school from other universities, namely UCC, KNUST, and uh, School of Mines, Takwa. On Saturday, May 20th or May 27th, as the decision may fall, we plan to organize a huge UG at 75 marathon. We are still in the process of planning. We hope it will be possible, uh, but we haven't confirmed everything yet. And this, in May, we will be having UG at 75 Family Day, which will be games for the aging and children and other members of uh, the university community with their family. In June, we shall be having University of Ghana 75th Swimming and Tennis Championship. And then in July, before we round up the activities, we will be having UG at 75 staff and alumni games. So as you can see, Mr. Chair, Madam Registrar, LOC Chair and Co-Chair, we have very interesting activities and the students, you are at the center of our activities. We are happy about your patronage. Senior management, we are very happy. <laughs> Shake it, put 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 it
So I'm not in any town in a dance Pull on me dear old giant and a baby girl Come back to my ass and be spicy We are then a fly to Canada Nah, 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 nah If I don't get to your back, then front Take a hike for your back, then dance Like say we can play like come back Nah, nah, Thank you very much, Doc. I'm excited to be here as a proud alumnus of this great institution, Fountain of Knowledge. Yes, I belong to the Premier Hall of the Premier University, Legon Hall. And XB, specifically, I can see my hall. Yes. Room 304. Yes. <laughs> I don't know whether it's mixed now or... Okay, great. So, it used to be a girl's hall and it still is, thankfully. So, I think that um, Dr. Bitugu has given the preamble to whatever I have to say. And I'm going to be very brief. Um, because the saying goes that um, a healthy mind in a healthy body, I refer to that saying to lend credence to the importance of sports. If you're talking about a holistic education, you cannot forget about the role that sports plays. So, um, if you're an athlete at the university, you know that your, your path has been charted for you. The university gives you an education which prepares you for the world. So, um, I see from my preliminary readings about the 75th anniversary celebration that the theme is I'm trying to get it um the theme is nurturing resilience adopting technology embracing humanism from that i see resilience and nothing epitomizes resilience better than sports because it takes a lot of resilience and perseverance to achieve laurels in the sporting arena. Technology, as we well know, enhances everything. It has its bad sides and positive sides, but for an educational institution and for students, it's a good tool which makes life as a student better, whichever way you look at it. And so technology has come to make our lives better and to give us, to give us advancement in whatever space we may find ourselves. Within sports also you find the element of humanism because you learn as an athlete, the values of camaraderie, 
sportsmanship, teamwork, fair play, fairness, healthy competition, empathy, and you grow a solid work ethic also. So these are values that you gain from the sporting space. And so if you happen to be an athlete within a great university like this, I think that you, you are head and shoulders above your peers when you step out there into the world. The University of Ghana has, um, has nurtured me in so many ways. I had my first degree or undergraduate program here. I majored in English and linguistics. I came back to the faculty of law to obtain my law degree, the LLB before I moved to the Ghana School of Law at Makola. I guess um, I kept coming back to the university because of the value system, the incredible relationships that you form here as a student for a lifetime. This is the best part of your life. After the university, you realize that life gets too serious. So, I will urge you to enjoy um, this space that you find yourself in at this point because you're getting knowledge, quality education, which is incomparable. I enjoyed the performance earlier because indeed the University of Ghana is the number one university in this country and even beyond. And I always feel proud that I got my basic, I mean, fundamental education for life from this institution. And so if you are here, you need to make the most of the time that you spend here. I came to the University of Ghana after completing um, the Ghana Institute of Journalism where I trained as a sports journalist and I found myself in the media space, sports media. You know, the sports ecosystem that Dr. Bitugu spoke about has so many facets. The media plays a pivotal role there and I'm happy to say um, without boasting or being boastful that I have earned a place as one of the foremost female sports journalists in the country. And I owe a lot of that, the knowledge and how I apply that knowledge to the quality education I gained from the University of Ghana. So this afternoon, I'm here to tell students, and um, especially the female students, that, I mean, the glass ceiling is being broken on a daily basis in our modern world. And so you should have no fears. The basic tools you need are right here, the education and it's quality education that you're getting. So you live here well equipped for the world. And if you have the passion for whatever you intend to pursue, the world will be at your feet and there'll be no stopping you. So now we are making inroads, we are making great strides in the spaces that were male dominated. And we, we go in there with a greater burden because being females, we need to be proving ourselves at every turn. But be encouraged because you come from the premier university. You're well equipped. 
And that alone should give you some solace that you will be able to make it in there. And when you indeed enter that space, make sure that you make your mark. It's not good enough earning a place at the table. The more important thing is holding down your place at that table and ensuring that the younger females that come in after you would be comfortable at the table because you would have laid all the building blocks for them. So my message to you is that wherever you find yourself when you leave this great institution, you need to be confident that you have earned the much needed knowledge, the value system, the work ethic, and the important interpersonal skills that you need to survive out there in the world. It is good to be here, the University of Ghana. I hope that you make the most of your presence here because many have not had the opportunity to be here. Make the most of the education that you're given. And sports is one of such great opportunities that you have here at the University of Ghana. The sports directorate of the University of Ghana has been very active for years and continues to be. I will not belabor the point about the national heroes that have been churned out by this university. That goes to tell you that you are being prepared to be the best out there. And when you go out there, if you are interested in the sporting space, there are several avenues for you. You can be in the media where I have been, so you can be a sports journalist, you can be practicing as a sports journalist, you can go into the administration of the game. Um, you heard Dr. Bello say that I am on the appeals committee of the Ghana Football Association with him. I was previously on the disciplinary committee. I have had the opportunity to be on the management committee of the Black Queens, the national women's team. And I've been in other places. I, I, for years, I covered hockey. And so I am always welcome at the hockey pitch. I spent most of my weekends at the hockey pitch and I enjoyed every bit of it. So what I'm simply saying is that sports offers you a lot when you leave the premises of the University of Ghana. You go out there, if you are interested in sports, if you are an athlete here, you know that there are several avenues for you to put your knowledge and skills and talent to use for the benefit of the society. So on the occasion of the 75th anniversary of this fountain of knowledge I wish you all well and I pray that you imbibe the knowledge the quality education being imparted to you and go out into the world and conquer the world and make a mark for yourself for your generation for your nation and for posterity. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you very much. The Pro Vice Chancellor, the Chairperson, Professors here, Lectures here, all protocol observed. It's an honor to be here, to be in front of uh, great minds who've taught a lot of Ghanaians to be where they are. When I received the call yesterday to come and give a speech, I did not hesitate because I want to be practical. My sister Eva has spoken a lot. Let me be a bit 
practical. Combining education sports is not easy. It's two hard works combined together. Mostly they are intertwined. If you go into the US, I like their system over there. Because it has been carved in a way that allows you to make a career choice, which is if you want to go with sports, you educate yourself through that. And if you want to use the academic way, you have to be serious in studying. So it is very, very difficult to combine. But I believe in faith. If you believe in faith and you put hard work to it, I'm sure the sky will always be the limit. I play soccer. I was born to a soccer family. My father plays soccer. But Madam Chairperson, each time we went to play football young, as uh, young guys growing up, my father always beat us because he wanted us to educate ourselves. I schooled in Takradi, GSTS, but when I completed all level, I had the opportunity to start straight away the career path probably God has given me. And it was soccer. I was grateful that through the hard work of myself, my teammates, and the people around me, I was able to make it to the national team, ultimately. We played the junior national team, and it's an honor to represent Ghana. I entreat all those here, especially speaking to the sports fraternity, to apply wisdom, apply hard work, combine the education and sports, because that is where God probably has placed you. So I hope my junior brothers and sisters who are here today listening, who wants to become top sports men and women in this country to really attach that strong will of getting both education and sports until the level that you can depart to either choose sports or use academics as your profession. I'm very humbled. I'm grateful. I don't want to speak much because my sister Eva has done all. It's all about hard work and how dedicated you are to the career path chosen. I'm grateful and I'll end here. Thank you. Student athletes and all people present here today, I stand by all existing protocols and say good afternoon to you to all. It is always a great feeling when I stand in front of a young sportsmen. Sports is a universal culture that instills great values society demands from us. The University of Ghana is known for producing great sportsmen. And I know they will always strive to uphold that status. And for me, as the president of Titans of Africa, I will work with the assistant of my associate in the likes of ADI, TIC, INOVA, Capital Podiatry to make sure the University of Ghana campus becomes the hub of development of American football in Ghana. Now to all young men, I urge you to see this period of competition in your various sports disciplines as one that could be a turning point in your life. Compete as if the world is watching you. Compete to portray your hard work. Compete with yourselves. Challenge yourself to the last minute in true spirit of sportsmanship. God bless you all and it may best win. Now, we also want to appreciate the presence of the United States.
Yes, yes, you want. Okay. Okay. Good picture. No. When it's done, call me. Call me, I'll come and pick. Yes, you are here with us. Dr. Austin Lubutia. Okay, so great. Thanks for joining us. Uh, this is Universe TV. We are being joined by Mr. Gessna Himfu. He was one of the legends ambassadors who did join uh, the ceremony here for the launch of the University of Ghana at 75 as uh, sporting activities. So thanks for joining us. It's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for having me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, what do you make of this whole launch in itself? I think it's it's great. I mean, I received a call yesterday to at, uh, attend upon this, and I, I, I immediately said yes. But though I had a meeting to attend, I said no, let me shelve that and come along. Uh, I think I've always had the idea of combining sports and education because, uh, like I made mention in my speech, in the U.S., it's well done. And so, uh, students are able to know a career path uh, meant for them going into the future. And so it's, it's, it's very good when uh, events like that comes up and then you are invited to share with, with, with the students. Okay, um, let's talk a bit on development because University of Ghana tends to be a big hub. Yeah. Uh, for example, we've had Azamati Benjamin, Grace Obuo, but on the football front, mm -hmm. we've seen great players. The likes of Clinton Apia here, he was with Malaga some time back. Yes. And a few other Ghana Premier League players who come on, they don't flourish. Is this something that you'd want to take on board and see more, I mean, um, um, interest being shown in that area too? I think combining education and sport is not easy. It's, a, it's not an easy task at all. And so, you say, when you say flourish, I don't really understand. But I think the university should also highlight more on the activities. So, uh, clubs, let's say soccer clubs or football clubs, will have the opportunity to come and then... Uh, scout and select the best out of them. It can also even affect the national teams if it is well spoken about. Like this project, for instance, if it's on radio that something like that is coming, then you have observers from outside to come and observe. But we hope going into the future, uh, it will be highlighted upon and then to attract the needed attention. Because if I had not received a call yesterday, <laughs> There's no way I would have known that something like that was okay, happening. Yeah. Okay, okay. And please, so finally, um, um, there are a lot of issues. Let me send you to Ghana now. Yeah. There are a lot of issues. Ghana Premier League, mm -hmm. um, we're trying to get the attention needed for football, local football. I and mean, what, what, what do you suggest that should be done in that area? I think it's, it's, a, it's an area when we start talking now, we'll not finish. Okay. Uh, one, we need to improve financially. Mm -hmm. The finances are not good. So the good material is that at any time comes out of the league within a season they are out of the country and when we lose all the talents obviously the, the, the excitement will not be there and so uh, it behoves on all of us to look at that area try to do something financial because the players are not properly remunerated and so when a club from Tanzania comes and they are offering like three thousand dollars they prefer going they don't even earn thousand dollars here in Ghana and so that's where the problem is. If you are able to tackle that area, the others will just fall in place. Let's, let's look at that area, tackle it. And then also by sheer individual selfishness. People are betting on soccer locally like there's never tomorrow. And it's one thing that we can't shy away from. So when we are able to curtail these things, then possibly uh, the sky will be, will be very good for us to reach. Thanks very much. It's been a nice. Yeah, hi there. I'm joined by the Deputy Director General of Ghana Sports Authority, Mr. Majid Bawa. A pleasure to have you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. I, now you are the uh, University of Ghana at 75 Sporting Activities, and we were interested in that conversation on American football. Yes. And its introduction. Yes, thank you very much. Um, American football is not a new sport. There's an association that has been organized for almost 10 years, uh, registered with the National Sports Authority. But the fact of the matter is that it's a specialized football that a lot of Ghanaians are not aware of. And so what we are doing now is to introduce it into the second cycle institutions. We have had a collaboration with some uh, former professional American footballers in the U.S. who are helping us to introduce it into the second cycle institution because we want to make it great and big and sustainable in the country. And the best we can do is to start it with the basic and the secondary cycle level 
So recently we wrote a letter to the Ghana Education Service, Education Directorate, so that they will inform the various second cycle institutions. So when the team comes, they will be able to get assistance and cooperation from the second cycle institutions. Um, um, on the 1st to 11th of March, we'll be receiving some visitors uh, and coaches. About five professional American footballers will be visiting Ghana. Uh, three coaches to, all, to assist in building a very strong association to, for the takeoff of American football. Okay. So it's not a very new sport per se, just that we have not had the much needed support and equipment to make it strong. But right now, we are getting the support from the international level. Okay, just a quick one. When you look at games like rugby, they have partnered with the Ghana Education Service and it appears that it it's, 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 it's seems to be catching some attention. Uh, are you looking to explore such um, avenues as well? Well, we, we, have, we are working closely with the rugby league and the rugby union together. There are two associations. You can hardly differentiate the two sports, but they are, they are different. Even the makeup of the football that they use is different. So we are working with the rugby union. We, 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 we employ some of the people who are passionate about the sports so that we can keep them. They will also give support to the association. And that is the reason why you have seen that uh, rugby is gaining grounds because of the support they receive from the National Sports Authority and the Minister of Youth and Sports. Okay, finally, just this is a bit outside here. Um, we know the Ghanaian facilities, sporting facilities, and how they are managed. I um, mean, going forward, do you think it's important that we look at a plan to properly manage and sustain them? You see, we have a peculiar problem in Africa, not only in Ghana. The facilities are owned by the state. The state have an agency responsible for the promotion and development of sports. The sports men and women in Ghana, and for that matter in Africa, most of them start as an a recreational sort of. It is not a profession for them. Because if you want to devote all your time in sports without a support, be it from the private sector or the government sector, you cannot make it. And so what people don't understand is that we have a challenge. There's, there's a, an agency responsible for the promotion and development of sports in the country. That is their core mandate. And they happen to manage the sports state facilities in Ghana. And so, if for example, Hassel Folk have a, a, a football match they, they, to play, Hassel Folk does not have a stadium on its own. They will have to rely on the facility of the state. Okay. And because the st uh, state has a responsibility to promote sports development in the country, they virtually have to use it for free. So it becomes very difficult for African institutions to, to, to maintain the facilities without the support. We could use it for other uh, commercial activities, but that should not supersede that of the sports before the, because the purpose for which it was set up was for sports. Okay. So when sports activities comes on, we forget about the commercial aspect and concentrate on the promotion and the development of, of the sports. So that is why you see that most African country has challenge in the management of the facility because not everything is commercialized. If we were to be commercial about what we do, then it becomes very easy for you to manage. For example, if there's a game, if there's a game in, in for example in Accra Sports Stadium, the National Sports Authority is not the organizer of the of the game. You understand? They are not the organizers, but they have a responsibility to prepare the st the stadium, the washrooms, the water, the the, the, the pitch itself. The National Sports Authority does it. Okay. And, and you know, now they don't make anything. 
they don't, they are no spectators in the games now but the, the organizers they have a benefit because they they have an ag agreement with uh, tv stations that they showcase that they turn life they get their, their but we will have to spend the money because we have a responsibility to prepare for them to be able to use things goes wrong there they blame the sports authority things goes right it's okay yeah, i'm sure we would we'll have an extensive one uh, maybe that back is, on. that Thank is you, okay sir. that's okay so we've been speaking to Deputy Director. And so still with the University of Ghana at 75 Sporting Activities launch, and we are joined by one of the legends. She also happens to be a sports icon when it comes to, I mean, this particular terrain. Thanks for joining us, Miss Eva Autry. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, and um, this is just the launch, and it appears like a uh, whole national, I mean, fiesta. <laughs> but but what, what do you make of it? Well, but that's what you get with the Premier University. Um, it's 75 years that we're celebrating. It's momentous. And so you can understand why it's, it's really a celebration for... Um, for all who are gathered here, especially for those of us who have had a, a, a history with the university. Um, I feel very proud to be back here. I don't remember the last time I walked these grounds and stood here, but this has afforded me the opportunity to be back here. So it's a celebration and we've started it in earnest. I'm sure there are a lot of young people who are looking to juggle both the learning and then uh, education and mm. sports as well. Mm. And you have been within, in and around sports. You've mm. explored both uh, being on the field as a journalist mm. and also the managerial part of it and the administrative part of it. Mm. And what do you think, um, I mean, these young ones need to do, I mean, with all of this space and opportunity that they have? They just need to be very, um, they, they just need to be very set in their minds and in their ways they need to know what they want and to pursue it tenaciously. I mean, they, they need to persevere. There's no, there's no easier way around that, you know, because you are combining two very tough uh, f fields of endeavor. You are combining your studies with the sports. It takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot of hard work. You must be passionate about uh, both, you know, to be able to excel at both. So it's something that they need to be passionate about. If, if they are here and they are pursuing sports, they need to be passionate about it. The passion makes it a lot easier for you because then it feels as if it's, you are doing something that you love already. Um, but there's no way around hard work you've got to work hard for everything if you want to be excellent at it okay, uh, finally um let's talk about i um, mean what, what the future holds again for these young ones because as one would have expected once you enter into university sports mm. there should be a transition mm -hmm. onto the national stage there should mm -hmm. be other mm -hmm. opportunities you can explore mm. and i know a lot of people who want or who would have wished that they continue in sports but never really had I mean that smooth transition I mean from the university uh, is it something that we need to look at yes I think that um, it, it would help if there was some guidance from the university and and some um, greater effort to ensure that the university um, has access to the avenues, you know, has links and connections so that they know that their, their students could be channeled to this field or that field. But bottom line is that the, the students themselves will have to be that passionate about it to pursue it to the logical conclusion. So, I mean, I said it, there are so many avenues you could go into the media field in the sporting arena you know you can go into administration you can you can still um, move into player agency there are so many there are so many avenues so i think that if the individual is that passionate about it they will find their way to the right avenue and make a mark okay, there. thank you very much thank you okay. um, this is the University of Ghana 75 
sporting activities. The launch has just taken place, and we are with the director of sports, Dr. Ben Pinnipi. Doc, thanks for joining. Thank you. So this appears to be so huge than we expected. It looks more like a national, I mean, launch. So I believe a lot went into this plan. Yeah, I mean, it is a national because it's the University of Ghana, the premier university, when they celebrating this 75th anniversary. And uh, clearly, it is something that uh, is a national. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a national uh, thing, and uh, it's nationwide. And uh, so clearly, a lot has gone into it. A lot of thought and the rest. Uh, but that is again typical University of Ghana. Yeah. Um, we let's talk about. I mean, the, this year's event itself. Uh, we see a few additions, the like of pickleball, which. Um, I mean, this is the first of its kind we are seeing here. Are you looking to introduce some I mean, activities aside the ones uh, which have already been shared? Yeah, yeah, those are some of the new events and disciplines we want to introduce. The pickleball, the tech ball, and maybe arm wrestling and some other disciplines. Uh, because we always would want to create opportunities for others to join, not only in the conventional and classical disciplines. Also, um, We've been focusing a lot on this uh, because we know the University of Ghana have dominance in some games like basketball. And um, we didn't really get to the mark and we need to be Is this whole game going to be one of the projects we're going to be used to and strengthen this and um, participate internally or try to draw more recruits uh, from the pool of talents that you have here? Oh, yeah, certainly that is something that we are going to do because what is happening is that. Uh, Anytime we review and we assess our strength, our weaknesses, the challenges, and uh, how to get back to the drawing board to uh, reassess and then get back and see what we can do. So clearly, the interholes, they are the stepping stone in the beginning of this process. And finally, any notable changes? Um, what makes this year a bit more different from the other years um, of, of, of the Interhall? Uh, well, it, uh, this 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 interhall game is happening in January, this, uh, January, February, March. Uh, a changed academic system. We just came back from Busa and then go into the first semester. And when we come back from Busa, we relax and then we go uh, into uh, uh, the second semester before we recruit. But we just come back from Busa and we recruit. So it's like a continuous work. Uh, it is also the fact that uh, this is uh, a period where we would have freshers coming in uh, uh, in January, uh, but we don't really have any competition for them. So it means uh, so many things. It means we need to work a little bit longer with them. We need to work so that they do not peak unnecessarily. We also think that uh, it is an advantage because then we can work on the very young ones for them to get majority before the major uh, competitions take place. Just a quick one. Um, this year we are also likely to see that we will be organized here. And how crucial is the University of Ghana I and mean, being the venue for I mean, most of the uh, universities going to be here? How crucial is it going to be? Oh, clearly, I mean, it's going to make a huge mark. I mean, incredible. I mean, you can even see the whole of Africa to have such uh, international standard facilities and infrastructure on the campus of the university, which will be university property for us to use and the rest is a huge one. It's massive. So, clearly, it is a way of motivating, inspiring, and promoting the development of sports and the involvement of students and also attracting students. Well. Clearly, it's a huge and massive one, indeed, a huge potential.